Hello, in this video I'd like to teach you about a common problem that you may run into when baking normal maps and a very simple solution for it. So here is my high poly and here is my low poly. The reason I just have this plain is so that there's no empty space here, but I also want to go ahead and add a few more details to this. So I want to add a few of these details. Uh, when you're adding these kinds of details, sometimes you create a geometry for it and sometimes it will simply be a texture. So Remember that the Z height does not actually matter. In fact, all it does is needlessly complicate things because your cage needs to be a lot stretched out a lot more to cover this. So instead, all you need to do is to have it be a lot less taller. All it needs to do is be about this tall right here. And this is adequate to capture this de detail. Because whether you use this one or this one, the normal map will look the same. So use the one that makes things a little bit simpler. So I've already gone ahead and made something here, but first I'd like to show you what exactly the problem is. So I'll go ahead and clone this out here, and I'll go ahead and position it right here. I'll go ahead and apply a symmetry modifier. Now here's an interesting trick. Let's say I want the symmetry to be equal, um, equal here in the middle. So I want it to be exactly on the other side of this plane here, both in terms of Y and X. So here's a nice trick. I'll just go here under Mirror. I'll press Alt-A and I'll click on the plane. X position, Y position, Z position. This will move the mirror sub-object that controls the, where the symmetry occurs. It will move it to the center. All I have to do is click on Flip and it will flip it over to the other side. So basically, the mirror sub-object determines where exactly symmetry will take place. And what I've done is I've moved the symmetry sub-object to the center of this plane. And I can do the same for the y-axis. I'll just go ahead and click on Y, Alt-A to activate a line, and click on the plane, and there we are. So now they are perfectly symmetrical. I'll also want to go ahead and add one of these details there as well. I'll go ahead and shrink it down. Rotate by 45 degrees here. Apply a symmetry modifier, symmetry Y, and now I can simply make it as long or as short as I would like it to be. Let's say somewhere right there. And I'll go ahead and select this and give it two iterations. And now I'll go ahead and bake this. The projection uh, modifier, the cage is already over here, but the cage needs to be above all of your details, all your high polygon geometry. And I'll go ahead and bake that and come back to you once it's done. And here is the result. As you can see, the the Z position didn't really matter so much because this is what we get in the end. And as you can see, the bake is perfect. There's no distortions in it. So whenever you're rendering something completely flat, you get a, you get a pretty much a perfect bake. No distortions. So let's go ahead and hide this. And now we'll take a look at this. So here is... I'll go ahead and hide this as well. And I'll, sh and I'll go ahead and show you my high poly geometry here. I have this object here for the majority. And then I have several instances of floating geometry here. I've got these little details here. I'll go ahead and symmetrify them. There we go. Now they are on both sides. So I've got some floating geometry. I've got these little objects on top. And I've got these bolts here as well. And here is my low poly mesh. I am taking advantage of having symmetrical textures so I can cram a lot more texture resolution into my normal map. So I've got this right here. Let me show you a very quick way to create a low poly from this. I'll just go ahead and clone this off here. So basically I have Turbo Smooth, delete that, edit poly, delete that. I have a show modifier. I can go ahead and delete that. I can uh, look at the outer amount just to make sure I know the number. It's five centimeters. And I'll go ahead and delete that and turn off symmetry for now. So a very quick way to create a low poly from this is first we'll go ahead and select these edges here loop and remove 
and then uh, remove these as well there we go next I'll go ahead and select this loop remove and I'll go ahead and weld these together go ahead and select this remember I want to keep this curvature here but these are completely unnecessary so I'll go ahead and planar Y the reason we get this strange shading is because they're all coming together here once I weld them it's gone because they're all welded together I'll then go ahead and weld it right here select loop remove weld this you can weld it up or down and there we go we've kept all the curvature and actually I can go ahead and remove this as well so there we go now I'll go ahead and apply the shell modifier bring it right back I'll go ahead and remove the center subdivide enter in a high number like 500 to triangulate it and now to create the actual UV I'll just go ahead and use text tools although you can just use the default unwrap UV modifier as well I will go ahead and select all the faces mapping flatten mapping now you want to enter in the correct face angle threshold so basically any angle that's greater than this number here will have a separate smoothing group applied if I set it to 45 it may give this and this the same smoothing group so if I set it to a lower number it will give this area and this area their own separate smoothing groups I'll click on OK and here we are make sure we do not have any inverted faces or overlapped faces okay we're good to go and then tools smoothing groups from UV shells which will give it its own separate smoothing groups collapse to and here is our low poly quick and easy I'll go ahead and uh, in fact we can actually go ahead and use this one so I'll go ahead and delete this one I'll give this my special material here because I like to give my low poly and high poly different materials to distinguish them it just makes it easy to visually coordinate them and I'll go ahead and bring it right back alright let's go ahead and apply first let me go ahead and make sure Turbo Smooth is on for this as, as you can see I've got zero iterations but two iterations when it's rendering and that's what's important here and if you have a low poly object, a high poly object like this it's not really necessary to have a turbo smooth modifier because it will, will not have a huge difference so if you have a very high poly detail you can just take turbo smooth off because it won't make that much of a difference however if your normal map is very high resolution you may want to go ahead and activate it because it will actually benefit from it so the density of your high polygon really depends on the, on the resolution of your textures alright I'll go ahead and apply projection pick list do not show the hidden objects control A add I'll go into let's say my front viewport and I'll simply increase the push amount here until it covers the high poly details there we go I'll go ahead and press 0 projection mapping enabled add normals map I'll just go ahead and give it uh, 512 by 512 keeping it simple and render and I will get back to you once it's finished and here is the result and it looks kind of decent from, from this distance but if you actually analyze and look closely you can see there's a lot of distortion for example look at this distortion here this is what we're supposed to be getting right here as you can see this round piece is centered in the middle but look at how it's distorted here as you can see it kind of looks like it's off to the side here and all the uh, this piece looks looks all right. This one is distorted. There's distortions here, here, here. Um, these pieces are slightly distorted, and even the top is distorted as well. You can see this is what it's supposed to look like here in the middle, more like this one. But look at this one here, this one, and this one. They are clearly being distorted, and this has to do with the way that the rays shoot at the object when you are baking your lope when you're baking your normal map as you can see when you're creating a flat surface it's shooting straight down so we get perfect details however what's happening here is that it's shooting the rays at an angle here and so it's capturing at 
it's capturing it at this angle and we get this distortion right here. However, there is a very easy way to fix this and here's what we do. I'll go ahead and select my low poly. I'll go ahead and delete the symmetry and I will go ahead and apply I, I should uh, delete the projection modifier I'll go ahead and apply a tessellate modifier. I will go ahead and right click here and make the tension zero. I recommend using the faces, the triangle icon and set the iteration to something like 2, 3 or 4. I'll go ahead and use 3 for this example. And as you can see it creates it basically kind of subdivides our geometry creates a lot more detail here. And now I will go ahead and apply the projection modifier. And the technique is the same. I will go ahead and increase the push amount here until it covers all the high polygon details like so. And I'll go ahead and bake it once again and I'll get back to you once it's done so we can compare the two results. Alright and here is the result. What I've done is I've created two materials. One with the first result when we had the basic the basic low poly mesh and I've created a second material with the second normal map that we got using this method after applying tessellation the tessellate modifier. So let's look at the difference. I'll just, go, I'll just go ahead and apply different materials so you can see the difference. So here is the first result and now I'll go ahead and apply the second material and watch the difference. As you can see here, once we have added a lot more detail, a lot more geometry here, we get a much nicer result. However, the thing is, you don't actually have to use this. You don't have to actually use this very detailed mesh. You can just go ahead and keep this one right here. After you're done, before you bake, you can simply go ahead and create a create a copy and put it right here or you can simply go ahead and copy this and delete the modifiers and it will work just as fine. So the tessellate modifier is just there for baking purposes. We don't actually have to export that to our game because it's way too high poly but the benefit is still there. So once again let me go ahead and show you some more examples. So this is with the second normal map and here's the first. As you can see it fixes a lot of the distortion. There's still a little bit of distortion here. You can see it's not quite in the center, but it's a lot better than what it used to be. Even these details right here are a little bit distorted, but now they're looking a lot better. So this is a very fast, easy technique to get higher quality bakes with a lot less distortion. It makes a big difference. Thank you for watching and take care.